Hey everybody, uh, this is a look at the 3090 Quantum FE block. Um, I got this a little later than I expected, but nonetheless, uh, let's take a look. Uh, this is a sample version, so while it should be close to retail, uh, you may not be exactly in terms of plastic seals, etc. as sealed as one you would get, okay? So out the box, we have the standard UK box affair opened this before just to take a quick look so it's not as pristine as it was um, right off the bat nice presentation definitely a very heavy block to say the very least um, mine is in black black edition gives you the silver back plate let's get this plastic off okay so uh, you get a very thick backplate. This is supposed to be active in terms of cooling the memory. Um, I think something about the way it comes in contact over here. I have to, when I get it open, I'll know, but more. Other than that, I think this is, you know, this is, feels like it might be glass. I'm not too sure. There's a plastic film on it. Um, very heavy and it comes with two terminals. Okay. You have the one that comes with the ports right out. And the other version being, if I can get it out here, uh, this version, the ports come out from the front or side. So you get the branding RTX 3090 on the rear instead of on the side. I personally will be using the terminal that's included on the block as is. So let's take that out. In the box, you will also get thermal pads installation hardware and a one-time use EK tool um, that's pretty much it for what's in the box let's take a look at the block itself Again. Uh, by default the 3090 is a three slaughter um, installing this block would make that into a one slaughter uh, you will need a block like this if you want to use the EK uh, vertical GPU mount which only supports up to two slots I have seen more than one of 3090 FE blocks. I have the Bits Power one. I will tell you right now, this uh, makes the other two that I've had, the Alpha Cool and the Bits Power one, feel like toys. Um, this is extremely heavy. Uh, if I get the scale out here, take a look here. All right, so scale out, take a look at that. 3.14 pounds for our grams boys that's 1775 grams okay is it couldn't see yeah 1771 grams okay so you can see very heavy um in terms of what performance will be we'll have to find out but this is a very thick block just from the side uh next part of this video would be taking the stock cooler off the 3090. After I get the stock cooler off the 3090, we will proceed to put this block on and we will see how it is. All right, here's my 3090. Um, I have never taken one of these apart, so this is going to be a discovery as we go. Whatever general idea that this needs to come out first. Um, let me see here. Try this out. Oh, there we go. Okay, so right away, this just comes right off. You can pry it out from the side. Let's see if I can bring that in a little closer. Okay. So we have some very small screws. All right. I'm not sure what size they are, but they look like small Phillips. So let's. Nope, too small. All right, so that's one. So there's four, the very minimum. Okay. So 
That's four screws. Should probably put them in a bag right now. So that's one, two, three, four. And okay, so that's loosening this a little bit. I see there are definitely hidden screws. One, two, three, four. Okay. So let's see if I can get these covers off with some tape. Okay. Oh, okay, they're coming off a little bit. I don't think painter's tape is strong enough. Uh, there we go. There's, you can just use tape to put that right up. Just press down. Yeah, I really don't think painter's tape is strong enough. But it still works. It's not as quick as perhaps maybe duct tape. Okay. All right, yep, duct tape so far seems to do better. Oh, those are magnetic? All right. All right, so there's these four. Okay, and I see there's torque screws underneath. Nothing like different screws for no particular reason. All right, find the right size here. Uh, nope. A tiny, extremely tiny. Okay. That is a, what's that? Can't see the eye. That fix a kit is horrible labeling. It's one of the smaller Torx ones. Um, okay. Good thing I'm actually recording this because I'm not gonna remember later. So, <laughs> works out, right? All right, so there's four of these. And then, I think I'm gonna put the screws back where on the actual cooler. That way I don't have to baggy them separately. Okay, so from all the Titans I've taken off before, I know they use these really flimsy canvas style pads. So I don't expect this to be any different. So I'm just gonna, oh yeah, I can feel it. Okay, there we go. Gentle, gentle, gentle. Wait, what is okay so when you're when you're taking this out be careful there are these little black rubber things mine just popped out just now um let me put this back okay good news is i've managed to preserve most of my pads without messing them up so file that to the side Okay, you know what? Let me get rid of all these other pads on the back. They're gonna have to come off anyway. Oh wow, they're, they're different. They're not what I... Oh, they are canvas style, but they're not as fragile. Oh, there we go. Yeah, see that? See what I mean? It comes apart really easily. Um, let me see if I have something I can just... I want to put the stock cord... Oh, okay, these... All right, let me get something to get these off. Okay, so I got it off. I ended up using like a small scraper. Um, all right, so now I see we have three cables we need to remove. One, two, and three. But I also see that this back plate, the IO shield has to come off for sure. Well, it's gonna have to come off since we're gonna change it to a different one on that block anyway. So we'll just Oh, it's a different size Torx again. Okay. All these are different. Again. All right. So, when we find the right size for this. Now this, I, I really don't understand why, even from an assembly point, why you would have so many different screws. You know, it really doesn't make sense. It's kind of like, this reminds me of I, um, the Novo laptops. Many, many, many years ago, I did some Lenovo laptop repair and they used to have like 50 different types of screws in one laptop, which made absolutely no sense. All right, okay, so we have some more up here. That was a black one. Uh, let me 
bring this down so I can see. So we have six more holding the aisle shield. Okay, they're shorter. Have some uh, thread grease on there. I know this is not easy to see on the camera, but just have to get these six off. They're very tiny and I don't want to lose them, which is why I'm not raising them up. If anything, with little screws, once you drop them, you never see them again. Okay, they all have thread lock on them. Right. One more. It kind of feels like to me there should be another one holding this bracket on. Oh shoot, okay, all right, never mind. Because the whole thing just kind of came up all at once. Wasn't expecting that. Okay, I gotta be super careful because this thing, oh shoot. Ooh. All right. Um, don't do what I just did. Do it from this side with it laying like this because that kind of just totally just fell out. Um, didn't seem to do any damage or in terms of bending the PCB or anything, but nonetheless, it's always disheartening when something like that happens. Okay, so let's get these wires. This Okay, so I have a small tweezer, which will help. First, uh, let's unlatch the black. Unlatch the black, uh, so we can pull the ribbon out. You gotta move this black thing. It's extremely hard to see. Okay, so I got the three wires out. Uh, the little black clip, uh, just move it with your finger. You can hardly tell when it's in the unlock position, but when it is, Take something like a tweezer, like right here, right? Put it under the wire and just gently tug and it'll come out. Don't force it. If you force it, you'll snap the ribbon, okay? Same goes for this one over here. This one, this is a very thin piece of wire, so you don't want to be tugging on it. Uh, the silver latch slides this way. When you slide it fully to where it can't slide anymore, once again, use a tweezer push the latch, right? And then when it's unlocked, you can slowly, slowly move this wire. Once again, you can put the tweezer behind it, but gently pull. Do not pull too hard, okay? You will break the wire. All right, so this thing's already falling apart in my hands. So I know that it's pretty much almost there. Okay, so I think the only piece left are these four main screws here, holding the GPU core. Once again, different screw. Not surprised by this point, but that is what it is. Okay, so that should be it. And we should finally be free. You know, it's kind of amazing. I've opened a few of these 3090s AIB models and they all had more pads on the back to an extent than the NVIDIA one. But they definitely, but, oh. I was expecting something spring-loaded, but seeing how that popped open, I assume they're not spring-loaded. So, just pressure. Uh, I would say all the screws are different, so, you know, shouldn't be too hard to figure out where things were. Um, I think they only kind of go in one way, in terms of the screw should only fit there. There's a retention bracket. Okay, get this out of the way. And I think the card should come right out at this point. Okay guys, um, it actually just came out. Uh, my camera cut off for a second, but it was just pretty much came off right away. Um, right now, I'm just going to try to move some of these pad things back and then clean up my screws and we'll proceed to the EK block. I cleaned off the paste and just some of the residue from the pads with some rubbing alcohol. Um, 
brief look at the instructions uh, tells me that this huge bag of one millimeter thermal pads is going to be all over the place on the PCB. Um, so I will now put on all the pads and there's a lot of places for little pads. So I'll get these on and then I'll give a quick look at how that looks. It's a lot of cutting. So come back after I cut that. These are the thermal pads for the front. Um, the instructions have some random little dots here and over here. It doesn't really match up with the PCB. They also did not say this spot right here, but looking at it, it looks like contact would come if the pad was not there or lack of contact or metal on metal contact. So I put a pad here just in case. Uh, the instructions now say to disassemble the block and install this portion first. So once we get this side facing down into the block, we will then pad the other portion, okay? The back of the card. So I'm gonna get this off, put that in, and then come back with the pads on the rear. I took the back plate off and wanna point out at this point, you can see all the raised areas uh, where those little pads were on the PCB over here. All right, so if you're confused, you can always look on the back. It's very precisely machined, actually. Um, at this point, if you're running MVLink, you will want to remove this because I can tell that this is screwed down here. You're not going to be able to remove it after you get the back plate back onto the card. Um, also, in terms of the active back plate, I can kind of see how they're going with that. Uh, this is kind of a cold plate right here, right? Water does should pass through here before it comes to the terminal. It comes through this area and, and through the front. So this part right here comes in contact with the back plate over here, right? See how that's raised up? And that is technically the heat would come through here, conduct over here, and then get cooled. And that's kind of how they consider it an active back plate. Now, um, how efficient that is, I don't know. I don't think that's as efficient as having, uh, you know, an actual block on the back of the back plate. But even then, that's kind of going through another layer, right? So I don't know, but I think this is, yeah, I, I don't, I don't think this will be as effective as those active back plates they make with the uh, that go on to the car directly with the you can see the fluid, but we can always find out. All right, so I'm gonna get the card in there, then I'm going to flip the card around to do the pads on the back. So I got the pads on the back done. Um, you will have about two extra strips, two to three extra strips, I ended up with three, depending on how precise you cut them. Um, you want to put some thermal paste here, as I guessed, this is how the active, pay, active back plate works. Um, amazingly, there's only these four screws and then these uh, side ones you put back for the aisle bracket. But pretty much the card is held into place with these four and then the back plate adds the other one, two, three, four, and then five, six, five, five, six, seven. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna get the back plate on and then we'll get some B-roll of how it looks and how it lights up. 